I have one more question just because I asked it on Twitter. Yes. Uh, if people would send questions. And I really wanted to get to this one. I know we've been yeah. talking for a while. And if you're still listening with us, I, I mean, <laughs> just thank you so much. And I think the, the entire conversation has been so great. Uh, but this is from Amy Joy on Twitter. Yeah. And she says, uh, we asked, uh, we were kind of joked that this would be truth and truth. truth yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she she actually did do a truth and dare. Uh, so, Holly, from whom did you learn the radical generosity you exhibit in your generous care for women? Mm, so that would be my parents, um, which is such a, like a cheesy answer, but that's who it is. So my parents, are cool for a lot of reasons, but one of the things that they taught us without us really, I don't think understanding that it, it wasn't common was that you can fix problems. (laughs) Um, and that we don't just bring things up and don't do anything about them. Um, so like they would definitely call a manager over at a restaurant um, if we were having trouble with our service, they would also call over someone if they were having good service. They also taught me how to look for the good, the good things going on. But like I did my first petition in elementary school, right? Like there was something that needed changing. And so we just did a petition, you know, and like, I like, um, walked out of a classroom in high school because of the teacher's behavior and took half the class with me. And my parents were like, okay, like, well, it sounds like what had to happen happened, you know, like, and, and so I think like, you know, I went in front of like the hiring committee for our Methodist church in middle school because the, the youth director needed to leave. Like it was not a, a okay situation. And my parents said like, you write your letter, you go, we'll stand with you. And, and so I think I, so, so that's the first step in generosity, I think is being empowered that like you can change things. Right. Um, and that it's totally fine to see gaps. So like, I'm a gap seer. Like I will go to a target and think, why don't they have this set up this way instead of this way? It'd be more efficient. And I go to any church and I'm like, why didn't they do this instead of this? Right. Like I gap see. And that's fine. Um, but my parents taught me like, we don't gap see and then just get upset. We don't gap see and just complain. We, we gap see and then we decide like, are you going to do something about it? Or are you not going to do something about it? So I was taught to gap see slash it comes naturally. I was taught to be empowered as a kid, like as a child, I was taught, you can go to the principal, you can go to the pastor, you can go to these people in power and tell them what you want, what you need. Um, and then my parents just modeled the hell out of it. Um, literally like shook the gates of hell with their generosity. Um, and so I, I didn't know any better is so much of it. So when, before I got ready to go to college and this shows you a lot about how like type A uh, young Holly was, but like my senior year of high school, I was like, show me what your budget is. Who is saying that when they're 18? And so she like started off, you know, with their income. And I got so offended. I was like, mom, we have so much money. I was like, why don't we have nicer cars? And she was like, just hold on. And so we went through and of course, like, oh, it's more expensive to be an adult than I thought. And then we got to their giving lines and I was like, well, no wonder I don't have a nice car, you know? And I gave her a really hard time about it. Like, what? Um, this is, you're giving away so much money. Um, and they would feel so uncomfortable with me telling you this right now, but even if my mom listened, there's no way she made it this far, but, um, <laughs> she'll be like, I hear her talk all the time. This is too much, but I, you know, and my, my favorite story them and their generosity is when we had a, one of my dear friends who was a rise woman needed to go to eating disorder treatment for like $50,000. And my parents opened a 0% interest credit card with a whole bunch of us that were in our twenties committing to send them $10 a month for 18 months and pay it off before they had interest. And uh, <laughs> we did. Um, that's how my parents are. That's, 
what they, they didn't have $50,000, but they had good credit and they had Jesus and trusted that he would get it paid back. Mm. And I think when we say things like that, people are like, God, that's so spiritual. It's so gross. And it can be, it's been used in very abusive ways. But what my parents have shown me is this like, they're so quiet. They've never been to a fundraising gala in their lives. Um, unless like one of their friends bought a table and my mom couldn't figure out how to get out of it. But um, my dad probably loved it. He's an Enneagram seven. He loves good party. And my mom was like, please just let me sit in this bed and read a book. But so, yeah, and we should have known this wasn't going to be a short answer, but I think like I'm, my mom really should be on podcast because she would have some really good things to say, but I'm trying to think like what my mom would say about generosity. And I think what they would say is like, will we just do it? Like, I think that's what they would say is like, well, we just like see something. And if we know that we have it, why wouldn't we do it? Like, I think they almost see these conversations as like puzzling. <laughs> like, like, what do you mean? How did Holly learn to be generous? Like, if she sees a need, she better meet it. You know, <laughs> like, that's what we do, you know? And so, and it, it's more complicated than that. I've had to work through a lot of like, making sure I have enough money to take care of myself. And like, there, you know, that's a whole other like podcast around how to be like generous and not um, like, not care about your own self. But yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, my parents just showed us that like we aren't helpless bystanders in a hurting world. That's good. Um, I mean, they like, this is just very quickly. My brother decided in high school that he was going to sell all of his possessions, AKA my parents' possessions and go live um, in the encampment with the folks who didn't have permanent housing because he was friends with them. And so my parents were like, we really love you. And we're looking forward to living with you for a couple more years, but we agree with what you're saying. So can your friends come live here instead? And so his like, um, unhoused friend just like came and lived with him, um, in my parents' house. So that's like a really good example of just like, my parents were like, like one, my parents are like always really willing to learn from their kids, which I think is like a huge thing. Um, but two, they were just like, well, we have an extra bedroom. So there's really not a reason that they can't come live here. And, um, anyways, it was great. They like, you never knew those years. You never knew when you went home from college, who was going to be at the dinner table. And it was such great joy. So, but yeah, my parents just really, I think they just really believe that their things aren't their own. Like, I think they like genuinely believe that, like not as like a theological premise. Like, I think they just really think like, oh, we have these things that we just happen to be in charge of, like we'll use them. So, um, yeah. So really just have parents that are off their rocker. That's what I'd recommend. <laughs> oh, that. that's good. Well, I, 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 I'm glad I asked that question. I, I really, you know, we, we want to make sure that we give space for our, our listeners. Sarah and I were talking about it and, and we have a, we have a pretty, um, steady number of people listening yeah, and we're great. so appreciative of, of even one 